Steely Dan, Katie Lied, right now on States and Kingdoms. Katie Lied. You know, we were talking about this before, like two minutes before, about... <laughs> You know, how difficult it is to talk about these albums, because Steely Dan is a band whose every album... Is wonderful. ...is great. And although there is a progression... Like, with anything. It's not as strong a progression from album to album as many other musicians. I mean, they, they were... You know, you feel that a lot of the things that they did, they, they could do... They could have done quite early. And, yeah. and did do. They were very well established musicians yeah. and songwriters. They they knew what they were doing. They could do from it from the start. Yeah, they could do it then. And yeah. uh, so it was just a question of having the the money, the resources. So this this was recorded, but it was, you know it was recorded with a ton of musicians, because by by this time they decided to just be a you know, studio recording band yeah. and Michael McDonald backing band. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know the rest of the band didn't really like that too much and. You know, just going back to join the Dewey Brothers and built weapons. Apparently, it was recorded with some very expensive German microphones. Yep, that's what it says. And some... This is a high-fidelity recorder. And using a DBX noise reduction system. It works half the time. And how'd that work out for you guys? <laughs> Anyways, okay, so it starts with Black Friday, which is a, a very rockin' R&B... Yeah, this song really, romp. really swings. It's kind of you said that I think did you say that last time yeah it's got such a great rhythm it's so it just uh really kind of sneaks up on you and then it's just this catchy yeah I always loved great that. song I just always loved the way he phrases things on this song and okay. he has such an interesting style you know there's a I guess you could say there's it's it's a mostly R&B thing I mean you hear you know Ray Charles in there on this album I hear I hear a lot of Bob Dylan mm-hmm yeah, which you is, said that, and that which, makes a lot of sense. Just like, I you know, the, there are little things that he does. It's yeah. like, you know, yeah. well, that sounds like Bob Dylan. And it makes sense, though. It makes and sense. And Donald Fagan, he's such a good vocalist, and he doesn't really get the credit for it. But Steely Dance songs aren't easy to sing. No. They're no, really not. I know. Try singing along. It's not easy. And they'd sound weird with anyone else singing them anyway. Yeah. You think he's got this atypical voice. It's very unique. And it it's just perfect for somehow it's just perfect yeah yeah this is a great song and uh great lyrics as, as always. always yeah as always you know there's a story here you know find it yeah <laughs> if you can you know it's, it's really good bad sneakers it, i can't you can't it just can't be picked apart you have perfect instruments his singing and phrasing and the words and the story that's yeah. being told and the images it evokes, and how the music goes along with it. Yeah. And I mean, it's got a. It's. I mean, it. The music to me, it makes me think of a little bit of like a beach. It's got a little bit of a tropical sound. A lot of. But but it does. I know. Yeah. I can't tell. It's one or the other. But they they both kind of converge. And and yet the he's also singing about New York. And and it. So for for both of us, it then calls to mind. The city. The city, and, you know, and it's, it's, you just get this whole picture, and it's a catchy, brilliantly produced, yeah, uh, just, you know, awesome song. Well, I think song. we said this when we talked about Silly Dan the last time, how cinematic so many of their songs are. Yeah. Like, lyrically and also musically, it's just very evocative of, like, movies and California or New York. Like, there's, like, a real like... show, I mean... There's a real showbiz yeah. streak through it, which makes sense coming from where they came from. But even more so than that, that the you know the music provides the sort of emotional context for the lyrics. Yeah. As as sometimes you know as opposed to. Right. The opposite. Yeah. Which, you know, often so many happens. of their songs are are narratives and. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I broke up with my girl and I'm so sad. And that goes for many songs, but I, I would just I just thought of that for that. Yeah. Rose Darling. This is all Michael McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> this is like an instance of just like layering vocals and just perfection with that 
you know, that, that chorus. Mm. I mean, that's, you know, I love this song. Yeah. I love the whole song. It's so fun. To me, this album and Pretzel Logic are, are closer. It's still very rock, you know, uh, this album sure. and Pretzel Logic. And, and they did start to move away from that. So I can imagine this being a favorite album. I can imagine any of them being favorites, really. But I can, ima- I can imagine this, you know, a lot of it's people so might like this. Because it is, you know, right in the middle. Well, I hate to use that word that people like to use. Accessible. I mean, I think all of their albums are pretty easy to listen to. But yeah, if you're more of a rock guy or gal, yeah, this is perfect. But you know what's funny about that is is Asia was the first album I listened to. I you know I love Countdown to Ecstasy. Me too. I mean to some extent it, it it's probably my most listened to Steely Dan album, but th- one of the the albums that I really really liked that really struck me was Gaucho. Yeah. Which is just funny because yeah. you you know you think oh so you like the earlier stuff it's like well I do but yeah actually Gaucho I thought I was really taken with the sound I, you know yeah. and two against nature. Well, um, I like it all. So anyway, I I, I, I don't know. I know that didn't. <laughs> it's hard to, to talk try, about. I'm trying to make sense here. You don't have to make sense. It's the it, this is very much a rock record. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy don't live in that New York City no more. You're so grammatically perfect. I know. I Daddy, speak so well. Daddy, Daddy don't live in that New York City anymore. anymore. Then another, you know, you're in California thinking about New York song, really, I I suppose. Yeah, Um, a lot of these feel like that. I mean, the guitar on this, which is uh, Larry Carlton, is really awesome. The song is like a vestige of the old Manhattan that I don't even know if I knew. Mm. You know, it feels like Alphabet City. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, well, obviously, you know, Avenue D, duh. But I mean, it really feels like Lower East Side, grungy, yeah, kind of borderline and sleazy. So fun. <laughs> just a cool, like, funky blues yeah. kind of sound. And just the guitar is, is, the guitar playing on this is so great. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's like the feature of the It's song. genuinely fun to hear. Dr. Wu. This is almost as good as Minutemen's version. That's a great version. It's not easy to do Steely Dan songs, and you don't often Clearly. come across Steely Dan covers, so... No, I mean, obviously... If you try it, you win. <laughs> I mean, I like that because it's so it's so in earnest. Well, I love bands who love Steely Dan. Yeah, I mean, that was a big thing with Minutemen, uh, the, the Steely Dan thing. If Steely Dan is an influence, you are, you are A number one in my book. This is such a classic song. Uh, it, it's it's probably the first song on the album that pre- it, yeah well it presents a character to you that you wonder about. You don't really you know you don't have things answered. You don't have questions answered in the song, but almost just kind yeah. of I guess you say it's like a Steely Dan trademark where you you know what I said like that it's like overheard conversations like you hear the names but you don't really get the full story so you yeah. wonder about it you could even you could make up yeah fill in the blanks I would imagine this is a lot of people's uh, one of their favorite Steely and the Dan horn songs. in the middle what is it is it is it a saxophone it's a saxophone mm. the sound of that is so 70s to I me love it. It, I love it I love it it like hurts yeah but it's so good yeah and it's such a it's such a great melody that he's playing. And if you crank it up loud enough, it does hurt. <laughs> Side two. Intermission. Everybody's gone to the movies. This Pervert. is. <laughs> I love this because this is, this is that side of Steely Dan that I think is is so fun. Yeah. You know, it's like a little. I don't want to use that word. It's a very strong word. Which word? Pervert. Oh. <laughs> Perverse, though. I, I think Perverse that's fair. Perverse is better. No, I mean, it's it's uh, it's honest. This and Cousin Dupree feel like it's <laughs> just mean, a continuation of the same story. Kind of. I think Cousin Dupree is worse. <laughs> well, they're obviously family. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, no, but the... But he doesn't say first cousins. 
the um the the thing about this that actually is is funny is the music yeah, but it just it just has this bouncy borderline calypso sound matched with what you know the lyrics and and what can you say it's just it's just so absolutely unique but i love i love the break you know when it's like oh baby come on and, and the music is just like dum, 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 dum. it's like <laughs> it's yeah. like creeping <laughs> <laughs> i <I've> got you <laughs> It's so good. So this is probably my favorite song. Um, Your Gold Teeth 2. Mm. Um, on Katie Lie, this is probably my favorite song. I just think this is like, for me, this is the masterpiece of the album. It's a very dramatic opening. It is. The, the piano just, it's really moving and, and beautiful. And... This is them. <laughs> <laughs> this is them. This is them. This is them. I mean, it's fully, <laughs> fully developed. This could, this could be on Asia, could be on certainly. Yeah, yeah. And, but this is, this is their, their, you know, their, their sound. What a perfectly balanced, melodically rich, you know, jazz infused rock song. Yeah, because the break is just so beautiful. The guitar is awesome. The way it, it all builds up and then comes together and then kind of, you know, goes back into the you the know, song and yeah. into the verse. It's just I love I love how it's put together. It, yeah. Just so good. Yeah. That's why you don't get tired of these songs. There's mm -mm. they're just they're they're just way, way too substantial. And uh I generally do not get tired of, of well I really had this playing all day and uh yeah, I you could know, just keep it, listening to I it. Just, I could keep playing it. But I have such a strong memory of being on the on the railroad, mm -hmm. the Long Island Railroad, and and hearing this song, and just you know looking out the window and and thinking how cool I was. What the hell were you going? I just rode the train. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hobo. I lived on the train. <laughs> Chain lightning. You know this is an interesting song on the album. I I think. This, you know, like a, a kind of slow blues. The vocal is kind of a soft, layered, you know, it's it's Most, not, it's not like, it's not one voice. It's not just Donald Fagan. Right. It's really like a chorusy vocal throughout the whole song, which is kind of nice, kind of interesting. You know, sort of emphasize it. Maybe I was going to say it before, but the vocal on this sort of reminds me of some of the like almost like 40s vocal groups. And, and there is a quality in Steely yeah. Dan that's more like 30s 40s jazz and oh, i don't know if you know if well anyone that is the jazz i feel like people want to go to well, because, like well, 60s jazz or even 50 you know think like oh miles davis well yeah but it's it's a little bit earlier than i mean that. they they have all of that but the i just feel like a lot of the songs the way the songs are constructed i mean these are these are songwriters you know they don't they don't improvise they don't do not improvise. They don't I do not improvise. But I just feel like the, the some of the the arrangements. It just reminds me of some of those, uh, like the you know, some Bobby of the Blatt. '40s groups. <laughs> Any world that I'm welcome to. This is a great example of a more, I guess, personal type of song. Yeah, more it emotional feels, lyric. Yeah, it feels a little personal. Well, it's sort this, of like, they all do. You know, the King of the World is one of my favorite songs in the world just, yeah not just steely dan songs yeah. and i always imagined that that was a very personal <laughs> a very personal lyric and i mean i was a little disappointed when you know it's not you never know well i mean not that there's no there, there could be i mean you might have invested some of that you know, but it's not yeah you know um but this is i i you know i, I sort of so i feel like the what I wanted that to be about is is I get to enjoy in this song. Yeah, that's fine. It's a really kind of straightforward rock song. It's got a little little tinge of a number of things, almost like country at, at times. Yeah, it's got you know, it's got the great Michael McDonald mm. backing chorusy vocal thing. That is so wonderful. This is the first album with Michael McDonald. Yeah. Did we say that? No. Oh, well, now we did. 
God no knows. one's watching at this point anyway. <laughs> Throw back the little ones. So this is an instance in my mind of, a, of you know, a closing song that keeps the album a little bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, don't end on that really heavy one. Throw in the fish song. <laughs> the fish song. Well, this this song really does, you know, it's, 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 it's like a a work song or a sea shanty, maybe. It's about fish, so I mean, it has to be. It has to be something like that. It's also instructional. Well, he says upstate. Yeah. So I feel like he's he's like fishing upstate somewhere. No, I mean, I think I think what happened is he got a little tired of the rat race down in the city. Things got a little too heated, so he moved upstate. And he's acting like he belongs there. Mm-hmm. He's gonna do a little fishing. Right. And that that's life. That's my life. But anyway. he is going to throw back the little ones. But he's gonna pan fry the big ones. And what? And gently squeeze them. Okay. <laughs> there's so much in this album. There's so much there's so much to be gained just from listening to it over and over again, mm-hmm. playing it. You know, learning the songs. It's just Steely Dan. I mean, they, they... Masters. You could say music just listen to Steely Dan if, if you want. I mean, if you wanted to. Anyway, yeah. I, I just I just love it. I love it. Uh, you know, we listened to it, this album, a ton. And, you know, it was once they did Countdown to XTC, you just have a string of masterpieces. And I really mean it masterpieces they really are that, yeah. I'm not, that's not hyperbole these these are perfectly yeah. thought out performed produced and even with the flaws brought on by you know by the technology the, the dbx noise reduction system uh even with that i it's still just perfect did we ever say that walter becker has beautiful hair i think so because he does. He really does. Did we mention that it was recorded on expensive German microphones? So there you have it, folks. Katie lied. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. And please make sure to like this video and consider subscribing to States and Kingdoms. We'll be back with another video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So see you next time and thank you so much for watching.